I think my biggest problem is being young and beautiful. It's my biggest problem because I've never been young and beautiful. Oh, I've been beautiful. God knows I've been young, but never the twain have met. Not to anyone I notice anyway. You know, a shrink acquaintance of mine believes this to be the root of my attraction to a class of men most would subtly describe as old and ugly. I think he's underestimating my wheels. You see, an ugly person who goes after a pretty person gets nothing but trouble. But a pretty person who goes after an ugly person gets at least cab fare. Now, I ain't saying I never fell for a pretty face. But relève on chant fait. You give me a toad with a pot of gold and I'll give you three meals a day. Because, honey, ain't no such thing as a toad when the lights go down. It's either feast or famine. It's the daylight you got to watch out for. Well, face it. A thing of beauty is a joy till sunrise. Oh, oh, there's another group that you got to watch your food stamps around. The hopeless. They break down into three major categories. Married. Just in for the weekend. Terminally straight. Those affairs are the worst. You go into them with your eyes open, knowing all the limitations, accepting them maturely. Then wham, bam, you're writing letters to Dear Abby and you're burning black candles at midnight. And you ask yourself, what happened? I tell you, what happened? You got just what you wanted. The person that thinks they's mature enough to handle an affair that's hopeless from the beginning are the same people who keep the publishers of gothic romances up to their tragic endings in mink. What do you think? Gorgeous, huh? Give me a break. It's still under construction. For those of you who ain't yet guessed, I am an entertainer. And what's left of one? I go by the name Virginia Ham. <laughs> ain't that a kick in the rubber parts? You should hear some of my former handles. Anita Man. Fonda Boys, Clairvoyant, Fave Waves, Bang Bang Ladesh. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of the last of a dying breed. Once the ERA and the gay civil rights bills pass, me and mine will find ourselves swept under the carpet, like the blacks did with Amos Andy and Angel Mima. That's all right. You know, with a voice and a face like this, I got nothing to worry about. I could always drive a cab. <laughs> you know, there are easier things in this life than being a drag queen. But uh, I ain't got no choice. Cause try as I may, I just can't walk in flats. <laughs> there was this one guy once his name was Charlie <laughs> oh he was everything you could want in an affair and more <laughs> he was tall he was handsome rich deaf the deafness was the more well he ain't never yelled at me he never complained when I snored all his friends were nice and quiet. Oh, I even learned me some of that deaf sign language. I think I remember some. Uh, it's cockroach. Oh, wait. Means. Oh, here's my favorite. Means I love you. And uh, I did too, but uh, not enough.
you know? In my life, I've slept with more men than are named and or numbered in the Bible. Old and New Testaments put together. But not once have I heard one say, Arnold, I love you. That I could believe. And I ask myself, do you really care? And you know, the only honest answer I could give myself is yes. I care. I care a great deal. But not enough. All right. Trying to learn from my lessons, but do I get it yet? I want to set an example, but I'm not sure I didn't handle All my demons, I'm thinking that I should court a vet I fight for all respect I'm working overtime to keep up my head I understand I'll get the love when I'm dead So my focus is red Choose the black, I'd almost keep it me chosen I've been the token, now the back is ahead On my sofa, I just... What's going on, everybody? Welcome and welcome back to Georgia, Carolina, your gated and racism-free community where we personalize culture and entertainment and then curate a conversation that's based in self-discovery and growth. I am your pop culture coordinator of all things inclusion and awareness, Jordan Renee, and I'm happy to have you back for another video. So what's going on, everybody? We are back and I am finally getting done this video that I've been talking about doing for weeks. I've been tending I've been intending to record this video for weeks, and this is why you should watch Torch Song Trilogy. Guys, this is my absolute top number one all-time favorite movie ever. It is by Harvey Firestein. Some of you may know him from Le Cage à Feu. Um, some of you guys may know him as Mrs. Doubtfire's brother in the movie either Aunt Jack or Uncle Terry. I can't remember which one was which. But Harvey Firestein is a cultural staple in queer culture and the creator of this Broadway play Torch Song Trilogy that is about a lifespan or a, a memoir type of coverage of three acts of this drag queen's life and the drag queen's name is arnold and she goes by the name virginia ham as you saw what you saw in the intro of this video was me performing the opening monologue from the film and i sorry i'm so easily distracted what you saw was me performing the opening monologue from the film and it was like kind of like my pseudo way of auditioning for if they ever remade the movie and they wanted to do it with a black lead or even a trans lead. Hey Harvey, I've tweeted you this before. Hopefully you see this video. Love you. Yeah, so this movie taught me one, that I could build an immediate intimate family without having to be validated or even accepted by my family, by society, by the world around me, by having friends. I didn't need any of those things. This movie taught me that I could build a life for myself and sustain myself and truly um, make an honest living off of doing something that I was passionate about. If you look at the main star of this movie, Harvey Firestein's character, Arnold, Arnold's character is a drag queen. That's their, that, that's their job. Like Arnold lives as a drag queen. Like that's his job 100% of the time. Like that, like that, that's his only profession. That, that's how he makes his money. And if you see Arnold's apartment, Arnold's apartment is laid. The house the laid bunny house ranch okay like house is laid beautiful apartment and it gave me a level of inspiration to pick myself up by my bra straps and really kind of take my life back you know 
I wish I had this movie so much earlier in my life. I discovered it later on in my life. I discovered it in, in, in my later 20s. And I wish I had found this movie earlier in my life to give me the hope that I needed to really believe in myself, even if nobody else did, because I spent a lot of my time trapped in my own self-doubt because I thought that if no one around me believed in me and when I say nobody around me believed in me I'm talking about my parents and my family members and the people who were close to me I'm not talking about you know people in school don't like you or you know random people on the you know the the street don't think you're talented I never really had that problem it was just that I was never supported, I was never nurtured, I was never pushed, I was never taken seriously, I was never embraced. And, you know, all of that, I believe, has root in me being queer and or alternative, different, because at first, I believed it was just me being gay, but I've known that I was a trans woman or trans feminine, at least for since I was nine, 10 years old. And it was confirmed at 15 that I was transgender. I didn't realize I was agender until I was 27. But it's just, I think that my differences made it harder to love me for them. And so I was never able to get what I needed or what I thought that I needed from them in order to take me in a direction to that I felt would aid me towards the trajectory that I wanted to go to. Arnold got there all on his own. And he affirms that towards the end of the movie in, in, a, in a powerful, powerful, powerful speech. And I... I just hope you guys watch this movie because it's such an inspirational story, but it's also extremely funny. There's two beautiful love stories that happen within the same movie and they happen to the same character. Like it shows that not only can somebody of the queer community find love, but they can find love twice and they can have not just one great love. It's not possible to have just one love of your life. There's, there, there's possible to have great loves and there's possible to lose love and for it to come back. And there's just, it's just so many overarching stories in this movie and the camaraderie of the friendships in this movie his his best friend is a black guy named murray and throughout the entire time of this movie murray is arnold's sounding board best friend ride or die like it it just really reminds me of me and my best friend alex um because me and Alex were that black and white drag queen duo that was running around the Southeast, like tearing it up, having a good time and just living life. And um, every time I watch that movie, I think about him because the way that those two interact, they just have this natural synergy and this natural chemistry that you know, it feels like they've been friends since they were in diapers. And that's instantly how I felt when I met my best friend, Alex. Um, for those of you who don't know, my my best friend, my brother, Alex, passed in 2020. Um, like my time with him is definitely some of the most impactful times of my life because that friendship made me feel my most valid, my most understood, my most fulfilled in a platonic way. I never thought that I could get everything that I would ever need from a human being in someone that I wasn't dating or in love with. You know, the crazy thing about that statement is Alex and I, we always went to drag gigs together, right? Most of the time that we were friends and doing drag together and, you know, going out and doing shows and touring and stuff together, we were in relationships. Like, we were in separate, separate relationships. You know, I've been with my husband since 2012. No, since 2011. Actually, I've been with my husband since 2011, since, since, we, since we were 19 years old. So... 
we've always had our own things going on, but we were always together. So when we showed up to shows, people always thought that we were dating. And we always thought that it was so weird because we never understood how we gave off that dynamic. But Alex would always tell me like, people were scared to come up and talk to him because they thought that I was Alex's boyfriend. <laughs> so funny. But I say all of that to say that the friendship in that movie was something that was so relatable and so connected to my own life in a way that I is so eerie and it's so meta to me. Like I look at those two in that movie and I literally see myself in my see, see myself in my best friend Alex. It's something that is very um, comforting to me when I miss him when I'm feeling really low and I just really want to talk to him and just looking at our pictures or like old videos and things just isn't doing it for me or it's making me sadder. I'll go and watch that movie as a way of seeing our friendship or seeing the love that we have for each other or seeing our camaraderie without actually having to watch footage of us. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's just levels. It also reflected some negative things in my life that I didn't realize I probably needed to work through. Um, like the relationship with my mother. Mind you, I haven't, you know, gotten to that point in my life, you know, baby steps. But the relationship that Arnold has with his mother is one that I genuinely wish I could have had with my mom. Me and my mother just didn't have a relationship. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, when my mother was raising me from birth until about 12, she was a amazing provider, but she was emotionally detached. So she was emotionally like unavailable for me as a parent, but she was an amazing provider when it came to, came to stability and finances. So it's hard to reconcile that all the time because it's hard to have that relationship with, with your parent now when your parent doesn't understand why there's an issue. Do you get what I'm saying? It's like, but I took care of you. But my response to that is always, okay, yeah, you bought me every Sean John, every G-Unit, every Converse, every Chuck Taylor, every this, every Levi, every Jinko Jean, every Academic Jean, whatever. But where is all that stuff now? Where's all that stuff now? You know what I could have had instead of those clothes and that stuff that wouldn't fit me no way? is memories. But I don't have those things. Like, I just happened to be telling my god sister the other day, I was like, I only have like one fond memory with my mother that I can think of that I can constantly go, go back to and be like, if I wanna have a good memory with my mom and like make me laugh, like if I was going to, a, to an actual acting audition, and I had to, you know, do a reading for uh, for for a um, child who's like going and like yeah, and like they have a great relationship with their mom. This would be what I would pull from. It would be the memory of me and my mom waking up on Saturday mornings, watching Cedar's World on BET. If you're old enough to remember Cedar's World and watching that in real time, drop down in the comments and say hi. I'm grown. Um. Hmm. But because some of y'all just got introduced to Cedar on BET Presents the Encore. Honey, the grown people watching the Encore were living, living to see Cedar. Oh, yes, God, honey. Cedar was, Cedar was the cartoon. We all wanted to be a real show, like her own, like actual show. Like she had her own countdown show. But we want to see the like we wanted to see the reality show. I still want to see the reality show. But getting up on Saturday mornings, watching Cedar's World with my mom, and then going to the mall and just following her around and watch her be glamorous and beautiful and buying pretty things that she doesn't want me to touch because I'm a little boy. Like fond memory. Or the only other one that I can think of is watching America's Next Top Model or American Idol with my mom. Those were the two shows that we stand 
hard for. And the closest thing that I can get to a memory like that of us together as with me as an adult is watching Basketball Wives together. So it's like, that's my that that's my torch song trilogy with my mom is like going to the mall with her as a baby and then watching reality tv with her as a kid and then watching reality tv with her at, as an adult um you see arnold's progression with his mother where as a kid you see him in her like her makeup and her you know clothes and her heels and things she she finds him playing and her stuff and she realizes what's happening and she's thrown all the way off it's that moment that that she realizes that her child is gay and um that's that moment of like i i related to that too because i used to get my ass whooped all the time for wearing my mother's shoes wearing my mother's jewelry wearing my mother's clothes like i thought my mom was so fly yo my mom what like she was she still is fly like no bullshit my mom is a fly ass woman like to this day we don't have the best relationship but i'm always someone i don't give a damn if, i don't give a damn if i don't like you if you look good in a picture i'm gonna say you look good like my mom is a fly ass woman like i know like i get a lot of like that's why I, 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 I'm never disappointed when I realize as the years go on how much like my mother I am. Because I used to want to, like, seeing that moment in the, in the movie of her looking for him all over the house and she finds him in her closet playing in her clothes and he got her lipstick on. Like, I related to that so much because my mom used to tear my ass up for wearing her shoes to school, for wearing her jewelry to school, wearing her hair and bones to school, wearing her, uh, wearing her baby links to school. Like, my mother's jewelry game was drippy. Like, drippy. Shoe game drippy. Like, Sneakers match the windbreakers with the jewelry and the, oh, yeah, oh, my God. But I just moments like that, it just, this movie makes me reflect on so many different facets of my life that I just never expect to think about. And then, like, the movie is about relationships and it projects that it's about romantic relationships, but then you see those overarching relationships that cohabitate with that, like friendships, like like mother son relationships, like like sibling relationships. You see that he has a brother, and the relationship that he so that he has with his father, and it's just I can't even equate my relationships to this movie. Like my Ed is my husband to be perfectly honest like my ed is my husband um and it's crazy because my husband and i are living like all three parts of this in a way because when i met my husband he was identifying as bisexual he wasn't even comfortable saying he was gay at first mind you this is pre-transition obviously but um like he wasn't even comfortable saying he was gay when he met me like and we went through so much like no commitment like we really went through it the first year of our relationship and then we've had bumps and stuff along the way but it's just been a real uh thing of us having to figure out how to love each other and i think the beginning of Ed and Arnold's relationship and and where they end up by the end of the movie is very representative of what's happening with me and my husband's marriage. Because I think at the beginning of our relationship, it started one way and the way that it's developing into now that we know what we know, I think that that's the beautiful thing. And it's allowing us to have the middle relationship that... Arnold and Alan have now like we get to have that middle relationship of um of Arnold finding new love and true love and you know the love that he wants to build a family with and this that and the third that's why I say that, that that we're going through all of this because we built the family together like we did that so it's just I think now 
that we went through the whole figuring out the 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 transition figuring out whether we're going to communicate figuring out how we're gonna like do we want to stay together or not and then figuring out the work that we're gonna put towards it i think now we're able to go back and have um a second honeymoon phase if you will because i think we had a honeymoon phase for sure in the beginning of our relationship but i think now we're getting to have a second run of that with me as a woman because that's why I say now it's the Arnold and Allen phase, because I feel like now it's the my husband and Jordan phase versus the when it started with Ed and um, Arnold. That's the my husband and my dead name phase. But now it's like we're getting to have that my husband and Jordan phase to go into the second part of that phase now the reason why the arnold and allen phase ends i don't want to you know spoil for you in the movie like i said i told you that this movie i don't like the way that i want want to do this is i don't want to tell you what what happens in the movie or recap it i just want to tell you what the movie means to me and why it's so special to me and hopefully you go and look for it or watch it for yourself and it can connect to you in the same way or in different ways that we can connect over together it's just there's the performance level the music in the movie is incredible the beginning number in the movie dames is one of my favorite songs i actually sing that song all the time if you listen to my audition tape at the beginning of the video when i get out of the car i start singing that that part of the song i, I, I start singing the um song because at the in the actual movie, when she finishes that part and she walks off, she she's walking towards the um, stage to start performing that group number. So it's like not enough. Da -da 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 Who writes the words and music? Yes, that's my shit. Yo, Dames is my shit for real. Like I really do love that song. Um, the music in this song is great. The performance in this movie is great. The camp is, I'm like, I want to do that. Like, I want to do that type of cabaret show. Like, I want to really do that. Like, if I could spend the rest of my life doing what Arnold did in this movie, like having a weekly show where you get, to, where you like come together each week and you put on a show every week and you do it three times a week and you have a full review whether you do music live like i would rap my music live like i would lip sync and dance like i would do all the shit like i want to do that like real cabaret style show drag like i would love to do that where's that nobody does that like this movie is just the life that i want to live like this movie is the life that i've lived it's 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 the life that i'm living it's the life that i want to live it's just so it touches every part of me that is important to me. And I think that this movie has the ability to touch any and everybody who watches it, whether you're queer or not, whether you're in a relationship or not, whether you have a good relationship with your family or not, blah, blah, blah. Like, whether you are actually going through anything that's happening in this movie, the movie is just, just a great fucking movie regardless. So you're going to enjoy the entertainment value. But I think that just seeing how this movie was made and how it was shot and how beautiful this storyline is, I think that everybody will take something different, but just as amazing as I did. As I as I hope I displayed to you, I took some amazing things from this movie and I hope I encouraged you guys to watch it. And I hope that I was able to show you guys what this movie means to me and how much it means to me. Hey, what's up? This is Editing Jordan. I wanted to jump in really quick before we got out of here and just add another fun fact right before we close this video out. If you remember at the beginning of the video, I said that this started off as a Broadway play. Well, in the original Broadway play, the person who played Harvey Firestein's mother, who ended up being played by Anne Bancroft in the movie, was actually played by Estelle Getty. Now, if that name sounds familiar to you, you may know her better as Sophia from The Golden Girls. Sophia from the Golden Girls was the original mother in Torch Song Trilogy, but because of filming obligations for the Golden Girls, she wasn't able to be in the movie. Hence, Anne Bancroft's casting. All right, back to the video. With that being said, thank you guys for coming. 
this has been another trek around Georgia, Carolina. I am your pop culture coordinator for all things inclusion and awareness. And I hope that, you know, like I said, I made you want to go watch it. Now, with that being said, if you like the video, like the video, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, do all the thank the thank the thank the thank the thanks, and I'm going to catch you in the next one. Maybe I'll do the boys in the band video today too. Maybe I won't. It's kind of hot today, which is weird because it's like January, but we'll see. Um, if not, I'll probably do that video tomorrow, but yeah, I'm probably actually about to go watch the movie again, so... I'll see y'all later. Peace.